How's it going everybody? My name is Dave Whipple and you're watching Bush Radical. And welcome back to my series Radical Bushcraft. But don't let the name fool you. There's nothing radical about what I'm going to tell you in these videos. As a matter of fact, it's my intention that this be the clearest, most easy to understand version of what we would all consider bushcraft that you're going to find here on YouTube. Let's talk about the gorilla in the room. Let's kick the giant bushcraft hornet's nest. That is the discussion of axes. No other tool, with the possible exception of the knife, is more closely associated with modern bushcraft than the axe. What I'm going to do is I'm going to discuss in this video the mechanical capabilities of the tool we call the axe. So let's get it on. Let's get it over with. Let's talk about the axe. Let's take the whole concept of an axe and break it down to the simplest form we possibly can. This is a knife. This is a wedge. A knife is meant to cut through material. A wedge is meant to separate material along its grain or to slide in between two objects and force them apart. The knife is meant to cut. A knife can never be too sharp. Wedges like that splitting wedge or this maul head, which is essentially a wedge with a hole through it, these things are meant to shove two things apart. Generally, one side of a block of wood from the other side of a block of wood. You can also use a wedge to separate about anything else. I've seen people split rocks with wedges. I've seen people uh, lift barns off the foundation with big wedges. Now a wedge does any number of wedge type jobs great. But it doesn't cut worth a crap and it should never be razor sharp. A wedge does a horrible job of cutting across the grain. A knife does a poor job of wedge work. Every single axe or hatchet in the world falls somewhere along that continuum between a wedge and a knife. An axe is basically a wedge on a handle, but it's such a thin wedge that it can cut. An axe is a tool that does wedge work. An axe is a tool that does cutting work. An axe is a tool that can span the gap between the other two tools. Sometimes acting like a knife, sometimes acting like a wedge. Now when it comes to an axe or a hatchet, you can always tell what it's meant to do by the profile of the bit. This is the thinnest hatchet I have. You can see that the bit on this hatchet is really no thicker than a knife. In that regard, a hatchet like this that's kept good and sharp, it can do a lot of the same work that a knife could do. Because it's just that thin. It can hold a good sharp edge. The downside of this tool is it's never going to split wood good. It just can't. It's not mechanically built to do it. This tool has absolutely no wedge profile until you get way up here, almost to the eye itself. You'd have to sink this thing in so deep before it would ever start to force material apart. It's painfully obvious that this tool is not intended to split wood with. Can you split wood with it? Yes, you can. Is it gonna be any good at it? No, it's not. It's also too light, and it also has too small of an eye to take a lot of really heavy abuse. You know, a hatchet like this is fantastic for hewing. It's fantastic for chopping. Judging by the weight of this tool, judging by the length of the handle, judging by the ultra thinness of the blade, there's no reason that this should ever be dull. This is a cutting tool. This is on the very extreme end of the spectrum between a knife and a wedge. On the other end of the spectrum, this is a splitting maul. It's basically a wedge with a hole for a handle. If this guy falls completely on the wedge side and this guy falls completely on the knife side, the one thing that you can take away from this with absolute certainty is this is not gonna perform like a knife and this is not gonna perform like a wedge. You might get this to cut something with a lot of effort and force. You might get this to split something with a lot of effort and force. But this can't do what this does well and this cannot do what that does well. For starters, I see people all the time advocating and carrying very, very small axes. A small axe is a hatchet. People don't want to hear that, but that's the truth of the matter. If it feels really good with one hand, and it feels awkward with two, then it's a hatchet. I would say for camping, the smallest I would personally go with, I'm not against a boy's axe. For a guy my size, it, it feels a bit small. And it's an axe. You gotta use, you gotta use a boy's axe with two hands. It's not a hatchet. This is a two and a half pound head on a 28 inch handle. This is your standard boy's axe. Small axes like this can split around a firewood. Of course, the bigger the firewood, the less this is gonna wanna split it. You're gonna want a real ax to do work like that. The small Husqvarna's, the small Holtzbrooks, the small, uh, so the small council, Hudson Bay type of stuff, the small saddle ax. It's only gonna split wood 
that's nearly the size where it doesn't really need to be split. That's just the truth about it. Throw your hate mail down below. I'll take it. If you're going into the backcountry and you may need to, you may need to bust up big wet wood in a wet environment, you're going to want a full size axe. If you're going into an area where it's fire kill, a lot of northern British Columbia is like that, a lot of the Yukon is like that, where it's just scrub on the ground and there's dead trees that have been through a forest fire. If we're going to want a full size axe to break any of that stuff up, here's a good rule of thumb to remember. If it's dry and seasoned wood and it's small enough, that you can split it with a camp hatchet. It probably doesn't need to be split in the first place. If you want to take your camp hatchet type of ax and use it to, to chop and hew and, and whittle and craft, that's great. That's what those things are for. When I see people get hurt because they've got a block of wood this big and they're trying to split it with a razor sharp hatchet ax, that's the size of a framing hammer, and they're really giving it. it. It just, it doesn't need to happen. It's not the right tool to split wood with. That brings me to axe myth number two. So if axe myth number one is that a small, light, generally Swedish style, razor sharp axe is the best axe for camping, I would say axe myth number two is that your axe should be razor sharp. This one absolutely drives me out of my freaking mind. Every axe should be razor sharp. If you listen close, you'll hear the background of this video. There's a, a, an engine droning on in the background. That's because my neighbor down the road here is having uh, some timber select cut. He's probably got 40 acres. He's having some of the, the nicer timber cut out of there. And uh, I'll tell you one thing right now. There's not anybody down there swinging an axe. There's nobody even running a chainsaw. They're using heavy forestry equipment like every other forestry company in the world uses. And a lot of times you see guys that work for logging companies and they're not even running saws anymore. They sure as heck ain't swinging an axe. That whole idea of an axe needs to be razor sharp, that's from the logging days when a guy made his money by how many board feet he put on the ground every day. Guy'd come by. Timber crews a tree, figure out the board footage in the log that was on the tree, and a couple guys would put it on the ground with axes. And when you're a production logger with an axe, there is no such thing as having an axe that's too sharp. Because the more wood you cut, the more money you make, the easier it is on you. It's the way to go. The only problem is, is nobody's been a production logger with an axe since the 30s probably. Maybe even farther back than that. About the time the crosscut saw really went from being just a bucking tool to a felling tool, since those days, that old nugget of every axe should be shaving sharp has been passed on a hundred times by a hundred thousand different people. And everybody hears that and a lot of people adopt it. Well, my axe needs to be razor sharp. Depends on what you're doing with that axe. Now, I've split 40, 50, 60 cord of wood with an ax. And I've hit myself so many times I can't even count. But I've never cut myself with an ax. You wanna know why? Because my splitting ax is dull enough I could run my tongue all over it hard and it's not gonna give me a cut. You do not need a sharp ax to split wood. You shouldn't use a sharp ax to split wood. You shouldn't use a short handled ax to split wood. We're talking firewood. We're talking your supply of firewood. If you're out in the woods, you're swinging an axe, you're bucking it, you're, you're cutting up firewood. There's no reason you should ever have a short handle. It'll hit you before it hits the ground if you've got an upright. A lot of times I'm splitting wood that's laying flat on the ground and I'm splitting behind myself on both sides or splitting something that's far enough to the left or far enough to the right that that bit can never catch and come back into my leg. But when I have hit myself, I've never cut myself because I swing a doll axe. Now by doll, I don't mean that it's blunt. I don't mean that it's stupid. I mean it is, it's sharp enough you could fell a tree with it, but you'd work at it a bit. And the bit on that axe, if it hits a rock, it hits a rock, no big deal. It, it only gets sharpened with a file and only to the point where it's starting to feel like it's got a bite and then I leave it alone and it hits dirt and rocks and everything else. I have never in my life 
saw any need whatsoever for a shaving sharp splitting axe. And anybody that tells you that is pointing you in the wrong direction because you're not, you're not going to need a razor sharp axe to split wood. Sooner or later, you'll hit yourself swinging a splitting axe, splitting firewood. If you're splitting ricks of firewood or cords of firewood or a truckload of firewood with an axe, eventually you're gonna hit yourself. And when you do, if that axe is a razor sharp axe, you will pay for it. Don't buy into that rule. You're not a lumberjack, I'm not a lumberjack. You don't need a razor sharp axe if you are just splitting with it. If you're felling with it, it should be as sharp as it can possibly be. How many people actually fell trees for a living with an axe today? Probably next to nobody. I would say the takeaway is this. If you're gonna use an axe for camping, it should be sharp, but it shouldn't be razor sharp. It should cut just fine. It should chop just fine. And I would say uh, something that's a good happy medium, maybe a, a 32 inch handle, a 36 inch handle with a three pound head or a three and a half pound head, something that can do real work, something that's not so thin it's not gonna wanna split well and something that's not so thick it's not gonna wanna chop well and keep it sharp but not razor sharp. You see guys will get an ax and they'll buff it out and you'll be able to take the hair right off your arm with it. That's all fine and good until you bounce it off your foot and uh, take three toes off with it. And then you realize, oh yeah, I'm not doing a chore that requires a razor sharp ax. Why did I have it razor sharp? You don't want to be in that situation. If you only have an ax that you're felling with, keep it as sharp as you want. If you only have an ax that you're splitting with, make sure it's not sharp. There was a company one time that uh, they, they sold uh, wedges and the wedges came razor sharp from the factory. And if there's anything in the world that's made me want to pull my hair out, it's the razor sharp splitting wedge. Nothing needs to be razor sharp to work in, as a splitting wedge. And uh, some people got some very serious injuries from this ridiculous razor sharp splitting wedge. It didn't need to happen. Wedges split, knives cut. A thicker bit is going to be more of a wedge. Thinner bit is going to act more like a knife. There's a continuum from a knife all the way up to a wedge. If you do a lot of chopping, get something with a thinner bit. If you do nothing but splitting, uh, get something with a, a nice thick bit. One thing I think is more important than anything else is give yourself a good honest evaluation of what you want to do with it. Me personally, I, I, would, I would never consider using anything other than a full size axe because eventually I find that I always I always need a full size axe to do real axe work and, and I don't want to try to do real axe work with something that's the size of a frame and hammer. So whether you're new to working with an axe or spending time in the outdoors or you're just looking for a different perspective, maybe something that makes a little bit more sense to you, uh, possibly a, a bit more common sense approach to which axe is the right axe to get to do the things that you want to do with it. I hope that you found this video really helpful. Now, you've probably noticed in this video I haven't told anybody how to use an axe, how to swing an axe, how to be safe with an axe, whatnot. Because as soon as I'm done, everything I've said, somebody's gonna tell me I'm wrong. That's just the nature of this particular tool. Our favorite bushcraft tool, the axe. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Radical Bushcraft. Uh, my name is Dave Whipple and you've been watching Bush Radical. And be radical, eh? See you soon.